By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Often Troll Cup number five. And we have reached round number four. And in round number four, we are back with the uh, blue white robots in control deck. But this time it's taking on a green stompy deck piloted by Stefan. So we've got Martijn on blue white robots taking on Stefan on green stompy. And I'm really liking this. Two different strategies going face to face. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip the deck decks, check them maybe out after the match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And that is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you really enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show by becoming a patron via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, now that you're fully up to date, we are going to continue with uh, the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Martijn, Blue White Robots. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Martijn. So it's blue white with that, you know, famous black splash, demonic tutor, mind twist. And it's really a robots deck. And it's called a robots deck because of the uh, play set of Triskelions and the play set of Suchis. And of course, they go together quite well with those three copy artifacts. Basically, what you want to do with a deck like this is get your uh, mana ramp out in the form of the Moxen, the Black Lotus. You've got your Mistress Workshop. You've got your... Um, Soul Ring, of course, and two Mana Volts here in this deck. And they're going to help you to kind of play out that Tsuchi and play out that Trike as early as you can. Once they hit the board, you're going to start copying them with your Copy Artifact. And then, of course, you've got all your control spells to control the board. And, of course, that very powerful blue power to kind of even get further ahead in the game. And, you know, when you're playing blue-white, it's, it's such a classical good control combination. You've got access to Swords to Plowshares to Disenchants. There are actually no counter spells in this deck well actually there's one counter spell which is also ridiculously good that is the mana drain i mean every time you can combine mana tra mana drain with for example a card like brain geyser uh mana drain with a card like recall and even mana drain in combination with a jam day tome that's all good you know mana drain is just such a sick card and so it makes sense that he's just playing that as a one-off counter spell and of, often um, as an opponent when you're playing against blue white you're expecting more counter magic than just a one-off so even though you're only playing with just one counter spell for the opponent it can feel like you're playing with more counter spells and I kind of understand why he's chosen not to play with too much counter magic because it also means that he has room for you know that those two mana volts to kind of ramp out his, his threats quicker it means he's got room for those two sarah angels it means he's got room for the psionic blast right so you're making space for other cards that maybe fit better to your personal play style or to your goal of the deck i think if you're playing with less counter magic it's kind of easier to go all out in the early stages of the game, right? Because you don't have to think, I want to counter stuff away. In this matchup against Stefan, I think counter magic is not going to be very good anyway because Stefan is playing mono green Stompy, so he's going to go really quick. And it's up to Martijn really to get the trike out early, start copying the trike, and then it's almost like a set victory, right? Because Triskelion is so good against all those one toughness creatures. If he cannot deploy the, uh, deploy the trike early or if Stefan can find like a Pendle Haven early, it's going to be a completely different game, right? There's going to be so much pressure on him. And then like one for one trades like Disenchant Swords for, for a creature threat, it's just not going to mean much. You know, Stefan probably doesn't mind. Anyway, we're talking a lot about Stefan's deck, so why not have a look at his list? Let's take a look at Stefan's Mono Green Stompy. And here we see the deck of Stefan. So this is really your classical mono green deck. And there are actually a lot of little small creatures in here. Four giant groves as well, four berserks. So really going for that plan. I think, you know, the ideal scenario for this deck is turn one Lunderware Elves, then turn two. I mean, depending on what's in hand, you could go for Ice Storm or you could put more pressure on the board. What I really like in these decks is when you combine Scavenger Folk together with Ice Storm, in this case, even a Crumble, because, I mean, you can attack the mana base, but if you don't have a strategy for the Artifact Rocks, like for your Mana Volts, for the Mox, and for the Soul Rings, you're not really going to stand a chance. So I really like the fact that he's gone kind of deep in on, uh, you know, on Artifact Destruction 
also with the crumbles and the scavenger folk also because you have to keep the uh, Mishra's factories in check as well and you know that a lot of players are going to play Mishra's factory I just love to crumble a factory it feels so efficient you take you take care of their land so it's a tempo play you take care of their creature so you can keep attacking with your green forces and your opponent is gaining zero mana because the casting cost is zero so it's it's really ideal. Um, I also love the fact that he's gone with Wailuli Wolf in this deck as well. That's a card that you don't see that often in these Stompy decks. I think they're quite nice together with Berserk. So Wailuli Wolf is a uh, creature for one green and one. It's a 1-1 one, 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 one from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to give any creature plus one, plus one. So the nice thing here is because he's also playing with Pendlehaven. If, for example, you've got a Script Sprites, which is, which is a 1-1 one, one flyer, kind of great evasion in old school you can attack you can pump it with your Pendlehaven, make it a 2-3 then you pump it with your Walulu Wolf making it a 3-4 then you put a giant growth on it so now it's a 6-7 and then you play your Berserk right and then all of a sudden you've got 12 trample damage coming towards your opponent and this is this is kind of a likely scenario actually when you're looking at the list of Stefan right because he is playing with four giant gross he is playing with four berserks he's playing with four script sprites he's playing with three Pendlehavens right remember Pendlehaven is a legendary land so you can never have more than two in play or more than one in play I mean if you play the second the uh you, you need to just one of the two needs to go um but yeah it's it's really good in this deck to go for three Pendlehavens because you don't need a lot of mana in this deck, right? Your your top end is your Ice Storm, which is three. So uh, the only reason that you want to have a lot of green mana at the start of the game basically is because you want to win that tempo game. So you want to just play a lot of threats, basically do two things a turn instead of one thing. Your opponent is probably still doing one thing. The, the tough part of this is, and that's why I understand all the artifact removal, are, you know, the Moxen and all those kind of like power card, cheat cards that you have in old school. It's really difficult to compete with that if you don't have those cards. So that's always why, you know, the, the, the people love these decks, you know, because it's it's budget friendly and it's really the underdog deck, deck isn't it, right? Uh, but they have been quite successful uh, very recently, right? They've, they've made it to finals. They've even won tournaments. So, I mean, you shouldn't underestimate Mono Green. And um, of course, I have to say the most recent decks always have kind of this black splash to give access to terrorists that are then in the sideboard and also give access to that one demonic tutor that could be decisive. But I'm kind of liking this. I like just to stick to Mono Green. It, I have a soft spot for monocolor decks. And I, I think because I can just imagine, okay, you are a green wizard or you are a blue wizard. You know, you really, you stand for something. You are a black wizard. You know, I just like that that color identity, I guess. But that, that's probably just me. Anyway, this is the deck of Stefan. We've looked at the deck of his opponent, Martijn. That means we are ready. Let's go to round number four of the Often Troll Cup. Game number one here begins Stefan on the play playing Mono Green starting with a Scripps Price turn one. So some early pressure. Oh, Larby of Alexandria there for Martin. He's on blue-white robots. Very strong start for him. And at least uh, Stefan is playing with the deck where he can like put full pressure on Martin, maybe forcing him to go off the Loa plan. But I mean, it is highly unlikely. This is really bad news for Stefan. Now, do remember, he is playing with a full play set of Ice Storms. And he's in the tank already. Probably has two options. Gonna go for Argovian Pixies, a 2-1 creature from Antiquities. And all damage dealt to the Pixies by Artifacts is reduced to zero. So it's really good against the uh, Mishra's Factories. There we see Martin, of course, drawing another card. Still having... Oh, look at that. Also has a strip mine in hand to take care of the Mishra's factory next turn. That could be a good option for him and Stefan can potentially hit him for five here. He's going to animate. I think that's what he's going to do. Look at him go. Five points of damage or are we going to see a disenchant here on the factory? He is a little bit hesitant here. Probably also thinking about the strip mine that he can play next turn. He's going to go for the disenchant. I think this is a good uh, decision here by Martin. I mean, you've got to draw this into the long game. Then he will definitely win. So just try to make sure you don't take more damage than absolutely necessary here. Especially with that library on board. I mean, the card draw advantage is, of course, sick here now for Martin with that Loa. This is card number three that he's drawing from that library. So that's an ancestral recall advantage over your opponent. Now remember, he has the strip mine in hand. Could go, of course, for the forest. Also, Stefan, you know, missed the land drop last turn. 
So that could be a consideration. And Martina going to look at the Argovian Pixies. That's one you definitely want to sort to plowshares. Because you cannot use your Triskelion encounters on the Argovian Pixies. It's protected from artifacts. There we see an underground C tapping four. Are we going to see a Suchi? Suchi hitting the board. Passing the turn. So this is actually not too bad for Stefan. I think Stefan was maybe a little bit concerned about uh, Swords to Plowshares. And here you can see that Martin cannot block the Pixies. So he has to take the damage. Three points of damage for him. Okay, there's a Maze of If. And a pass. I mean, the bad news here for Stefan is he's not playing out any more pressure. No Scavenger Folk. Um, you know, no Lana or else, but also no Giant Grove, you know, for example, or no Berserk on the Argovian Pixies. I don't even know if that would have been a good play, but still, you, you can deal some more damage. He's simply going too slow. Here we see a Strip Mine on the on the Maze of If. Suchi swinging in. So Stefan dropping to 16, but that's not really a concern for him. Tapping 4 again. Are we going to see a second Suchi? Yep, second Suchi hitting the board. Okay, this, this is starting to look like a concern now for Stefan. Ooh, and not finding any forests. Oh, man, this is tough. Probably has a lot of two and three drops in hand. Attacking with both. Gonna put Martin on 10, so at least he halved his life. But he really needs Lance. He needs to play out those two drops, but he simply can't. There's a City of Brassy for Martin. Of course, gonna draw yet again with the Loa. Gonna hit, hit him for eight now. Gonna half Stefan's life. Perhaps Stefan has a crumble, which is really a card you don't want to play on the Suchi because you're going to give him four life. I mean, he can wait with that still, I guess. Don't even know if he has a crumble. Anyway, there's a Tundra and the attack for eight. Stefan's life is halved. It's so tough to play against an active Loa. There we go. Demonic Tutor. Ay, 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 ay. Things just keep getting worse. And I wonder what Martin's going to look up. I mean, he could go for a Mind Twist for two here. What other options does he have? Could go for an Ancestral Recall, but he already has. Oh, he goes for Time Walk, of course. I wasn't even thinking about it. And that gives him the game, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't think about Time Walk at all, but it makes perfect sense. So that is game one. That was a quick game. Wow. So I think despite the fact that Stefan is the quick player, you know, compared in this matchup, you can see that the deck of um, of Martin, of course, can go quick as well with those Moxen that he found. And yeah, Loa. Loa is tough to play against. So I think I think if you're Stefan, you're like, okay, so I lost the Loa game. That can happen. Just shuffle up, you know, and uh, you've got a good chance here in game two. Talking about that, let's go to game number two. Game number two, Stefan again on the play after losing that first game. This time starting with the Lana Elves. So in game one was the Script Sprites. Game two, it's the Lana Elves. But this turn one from Martin is not as impressive as that first turn in game number one, right? When he started with the Loa. So that's good news for Stefan. There's a Pendlehaven. He could pump the Lana here. Exactly. Dealing two points of damage. Martin dropping to 18. Needs to put pressure on. Tapping green. Okay, there's the Elves of Deep Shadow. So more pressure. This is a much better start for Stefan here. Finding that Pendlehaven, finding that extra pressure. And more importantly, Martijn is not finding any Moxen here. Going quite slow. Playing an underground C. Is that a Mana Vault there in hand? All the way on the right side. Can't really see it. That is a Mana Vault. So not playing a Suchi though. Passing the turn. So he's still open for at least three more points of damage. Now, do remember, Stefan is playing with four Giant Groves and four Berserk, so his deck is super explosive. In the tank here, perhaps he's got a Giant Grove and a Berserk in hand, who knows. Anyway, attacking first. Just dealing two points of damage, he wants to keep both mana. Probably going to play an Argovian Pixies or something else. There's a Mishra's Factory, tapping two. What are we going to see here? There's an Argovian Pixies, one green open. Could consider going for the crumble here if he has it. Exactly, he's got the crumble. Because I was like, I'm sure he left that one green mana open for a reason. Or else he would have used Pendlehaven into combat. So taking care of the mana vault. One extra life for Martin because of that. Going back up to 17. I mean, Martin has to find a way to ramp up. But he's not finding anything, it seems. So there are two lands there in his hand. He's thinking about what land to play out, I believe. Okay, he's going to go for Chaos Orb. 
Place strip mine so he could use Chaos Orb or actually take care of the land. Passing the turn, interesting because he could have chosen to go for strip mine on Pendlehaven. But maybe he's waiting for Stefan to use the Pendlehaven on a creature and then he's going to flip on that creature with the Chaos Orb. So very interesting moment in the game. I really wonder what Martin is going to do with his Chaos Orb. And again, I mean, the risky for Martin is when he activates the Chaos Orb, Stefan can respond. So if he has a crumble, he could crumble it away. Okay, there's another factory. Wow, that is good. Because that's an extra point of damage, right? He can use it to pump his factory. So attacking here. And I wonder what Martin is going to do. It must be tempting for him here to, to just strip the factory. But then he opens up to a crumble. So here we see the Pendlehaven activation on the Elves of Deep Shadow. So that's now 2-3 and of course the pump. Now we see the activation here of the strip line. Now remember Stefan's mana, green mana are all tapped. So he can use the Chaos Orb. Doesn't have to worry about a potential crumble. Ooh, and he's gonna go on the Mistress Factory. Gonna flip. Gonna take his time and it's a hit. It's a good flip, and it's good that he takes his time, by the way, because these these Chaos Orb flips are missed more often than you uh, than you might think. Martin is dropping to 12, but I think it's a good decision for Martin because you take three damage less, and you can still use your strip mine for the uh, for the other factory, so it makes sense. There's a Tundra. I mean, a Suchi would be great here for Martin. Let's see. Thinking about doing something. Tapping two. What are we going to see here? Okay, there's a demonic tutor. What to tutor for? That's a question. I mean, in this case, ancestral recall makes more sense. Balance. Balance could be quite good, actually. Balance would take care of the three creatures. You do lose a land yourself. And of course, Stefan, I believe. Or the two cards or three cards in hand for Stefan. So you do lose a lot of cards, but you do take care of all the pressure. And then you can still use your, your strip mine later to take care of the uh, of the factory. But it is a risk, of course. But I mean, balance would be a consideration for me here. Another option I think would be would be an ancestral recall just drawing three. Maybe a Black Lotus, depending on what you have in hand, right? If you can strip the Pendlehaven, um, you know, play Black Lotus, Trike, so I'm talking about the turn after, then you can uh, take care of some... Uh, yeah, there's the balance. You can take care of some creatures as well. Anyway, here's the balance. So going for the balance play. And I guess there are only three cards in hand for Martin, so it's not that bad. Only... Having to discard one card, that, that makes it even a better play. I thought his hand was fuller. So now Stefan has to kind of rebuild again. Balance is so good against these decks. There's another forest. Ooh, this is big, you know. Because that ice storm could have uh, taken care of the factory. There's another Tundra passing the turn. So now at least he can swing in for two half. The life total humor time would be on 10. Or not, there's a Swords to Plowshare, Stefan going up to 22. There's a Wailuli Wolf. There's the Loa, but not as impactful, of course, at this point in the game. There's the attack, he can pump it with the Pendlehaven. Martin on 10. Two cards in hand for Stefan. Ooh, another factory, that is really good. Martijn passing the turn. Animating the factory, swinging in for four because of the Pendlehaven pump. He's getting so close. What else can he do? Scavenger Folk hitting the board. Passing the turn. There is a workshop in hand there, Mishra's workshop. So he could go workshop and then play Suchi as well. There's the Suchi. There's the copy. Okay, wow. Two Suchis hitting the board. Now, what can Stefan do against this uh, Suchi army? That's the question. Drawing a card there for turn. Looked like it was a basic forest. Two cards in hand. Needs to get some Argovian Pixies. They would be quite good against this board. 
passing the turn. Oh, he's so close to winning it. And yet, so, so far, there's a Mishra's factory by Martijn in the pass. Of course, Martijn is playing very conservative. Makes sense. He's only on six, so using the Suchis to block. There's a pass by Stefan. <laughs> Mox Jet passing turn. Stefan needs Pixies. Okay, there's our Govian Pixies. Oh, that's quite good here. Remember, the Pixies cannot be blocked by artifact creatures. So next turn, Stefan can attack for two. Or not. There's the Sarah Angel. A perfect creature for this moment in the game. It can block the Pixies and, of course, attack because it doesn't have to tap when she attacks. One of the most powerful creatures in old school. There's the attack. Does that mean that Stefan has a Giant Grove? There's the block. Giant Grove making it a 5 4. So we're going to trade. Or not. Of course, the Wailuli Wolf can make it into a 6 5. Wow. Martijn needing a moment there to check out the wolf, but that means the Sarah Angel dies. She goes down. Another Pixie's hitting the board. Is Stefan going to win here? Next turn, he can attack for four, and he would put Martijn on two. That is huge. And, of course, he can use the Wailudi Wolf, so he can put him on one. Just a pass from Martijn. There's the attack into the red zone. Or not. Stefan needing a moment here. Probably wants to find a way to already win the game this turn. Remember, he also has the scavenger folk to take care of one of the artifacts. But yeah, just attacking with the two. Bumping it, so that's five points of damage. Martin dropping to one. Two cards in hand. There's a script sprites. He's not playing it out. That's it. Okay, winning game number two here for Stefan. So that means it's 1-1 one, one, and we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's uh, Martijn on the play after losing the second game. Let's see what he can do. Mishra's Factory into Soul Ring. Into Mana Vault. One mana floating. There's a Suchi turn one. Wow, this is huge. I mean, Martijn, the best thing for him to do, I guess, is, uh, well, crumble. But he could also do Lana or else turn one. But this is a really bad start for Stefan. If you're Martijn, of course, you're super happy with this. Early ramp gets you to control. Doesn't have any colored mana though. Let's see if we can find that in uh, turn number two. Okay, there's the color underground C. And I believe I saw a copy artifact in hand there. So could consider copying the Suchi. Exactly. There's the Suchi animating the factory. Look at that attacking for six. He's the aggressor now. I mean, this is really bad news for Stefani. He's dropping to. 14, by the way, not changing the dice, unfortunately, but I'll keep you posted. Dropping to 14. There's the Pixies. They're quite good. Very good blocker for the artifact creatures. He's going to take a damage here, uh, Martin. Going to drop to 19. Actually, to 18, of course, had to take uh, damage earlier. So he's on 18. Stefan is on 14 after that attack with the factory and the Suchi. I mean, Argovian Pixies, again, is so good. Yeah, now Stefan is changing it. Going to go down to 14. I mean, the dice, of course, uh, we use when you play on the stream. It's quite nice for us, the viewers, to see the live totals. There's the attack for six. No, for eight, actually. Both uh, of these are Suchis. So blocking one Suchi, taking four, going to drop to 10. I mean, it's it's looking quite good for Martijn. I mean, if, if you're Stefano, you're really hoping to find a Crumble, Scavenger Folk, or another Argovian Pixies. So he's still very much in it, but he needs to find something. There's that Time Walk, though. That's unfortunate here for Stefan. He's going to untap Upkeep, take damage from the Vault. Martijn dropping to 17, but he can attack again. Remember, Stefan is on 10. So you can put him on 6 here. What else can he do? Does he have another option? Ooh, he is animating as well. Going to put it into the red zone. So he's on 10. So could consider trading the pixie while blocking the, the factory with the pixies. Taking 8. 
That means he's on two. Are we going to see a psionic blast? No, we're going to see a copy artifact. For a moment there, I thought it was a psionic blast. So Stefan is on two life, I believe. Does have a berserk there in hand, but it's looking very bad for him. Yeah, so he's on two at the moment. Okay, there's a double script sprite. I mean, he he can chump at least. It's not what you want to do when you're the you're the, the mono green player, but I mean, just try to stay alive, right? So wanted to attack you, but then realizes, of course, that that copy artifact is another Suchi. So I don't think there's a good attack here actually for Stefan. Passing the turn. I mean, the script sprites fly over the artifact creatures, so next turn he can attack with those. The problem is, of course, that he's on two, so he's got to chump all those Suchis. Only has one Argovian Pixies, really needs a second Argovian Pixies or some artifact removal. There's the attack. Oh yeah, of course, he can double block and at least kill a Suchi. I mean, that's, that's smart. Using Pendlehaven on the Lanawar, double blocking. Then, of course, Martin can kill the Argovian Pixies. Oh, there's a Swords, though, on the Pixies. Yeah, that is the nil in the coffin, I think. Stefan, of course, is going up to, uh, to four. So at least that's something. But next turn, he will definitely be toast. Only having that one script sprites left on blocking duty. It's not looking great. Well, Lily Wolf there from the top. He's going to attack. I mean, that's kind of nice. Pump it to two. Does he have a giant growth? He does have a Berserk, which is quite nice. Double Berserk. So at least he can deal six points, but that's it. Or eight points, actually, I should say, because it's a 2-3, then a 4-3, uh, a and then an 8-3. So eight damage going in uh, there for more time. But uh, yeah, this was a very quick game three. I think that Mana Ramp made the difference, right? If you compare it to game two, where Martin couldn't find the Mox and couldn't find the Ramp, that just went quite slow for him and then Stefan was able to win but here in game three after that killer opener by Martin there was really nothing else that he could have done anyway Martin here winning again he's doing quite well in this tournament but um, for the next episode we don't have Martin on the stream anymore so I'm sorry if you're a fan of his deck but we are going to move on we're going to show you some other decks that were played at the event we've got two beautiful decks for you we've got uh, red white with a little blue splash so pink weenie being played by Alex you can see the pictures here of both of the decks and we've got it win uh, valley by Martin and I really uh, love this deck I like both of these decks actually they're pretty cool and uh, we are going to see them in action at the next episode so if you don't want to miss a thing make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell okay so if you're now subbed and if you're already subbed thank you so much also uh, consider liking this video sharing it on your socials and leaving a comment all these things are free and really help the channel move forward so if you love the content that i make please consider doing these three steps talking about helping the channel you can also become a patron of the show check out patreon.com slash timmy talks to find out how you can become a supporter of the show and the cool thing is you can already support uh, timmy talks for just one dollar a month and for that one dollar a month you get access to the timmy talks discord uh, server and your name will be mentioned at the end of every video in the end scroll what end scroll this end scroll Somebody can see.